Testing, one, two, oh, and we get our doubling back. Oh my goodness. Let me go over here. You should have heard how I opened. Everything you're hearing originated from samples recorded on my iPhone. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to show my angel face. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Hello. Let's see, I think my color balance is off. Let me see if I can get this better. Like that, no, no, no. Hmm. I think I like that too. Let me get a little brighter. There, there, that's better. How are you doing? Welcome. Is there a doubling of my voice or a single? Because I definitely hear a double here. If you hear a single, I'll be really happy. Um, but let me know what you're listening to and how my voice sounds. Is it all right? Um, single. Okay. Yay. I'll take me hearing a double as long as you're not hearing a double. So I hope you all are doing well. So this is a library called Mega Magic Harp that I'm working on. It has started originally with um, Yes, I recorded this with my iPhone. <laughs> there is an app called Usound that allows you to record. Let me see here. Um, if I set to the record settings. Oh, it's recording as we speak. Anyway, I recorded. Here, I can play it for you. Play. Twenty-four bit, uh, ninety-six kilohertz. I think, or maybe I just did forty-eight. I see two. So I first sampled. The, the, the story goes like this: um, My mom was willed. This incredible concert harp. It's a 40 string with the pedals and all that stuff harp. It's a beautiful harp. And um, on December 23rd, I sampled it just as a first as a really quick like beta test. I just did like octaves and then played it on my uh, I had my laptop with Unify and I mapped it out and I was like, 
this is really nice. And so the following night, I at 11 o'clock when everybody else was asleep, I recorded for 25 minutes. It's a single take, 25 minutes of me playing every note on the harp, letting it ring out, trying not to breathe loud. My dog is over here snoring. I'm having to go, Athena, shh, every now and then. <laughs> Still ringing out. And then the next note. And as you can see, this is a harp where the first five or six strings are steel strings. So right there goes to nylon. Goes all the way down to A. Right? So I recorded it. I was going to... Um, I'm. At first, I was like, maybe this could be a library, um, but I want to record it better. Traditionally, right? You need to use nice microphones and everything. And my dad had some decent microphones, but I left my field recorder, my trusty Tascam X8 Porta Studio, which can do uh, two stereo XLR inputs uh, on each side of it for four microphones plus its built-in microphones. I left that in Portland. And so when I went to Boise to take my daughter to the airport, she just, uh, it was like the, like the 27th, um, I believe was the date. And I went to Guitar Center and I bought another Porta Studio. They were $100 off. To build a library, I will earn back what I pay for that easily um, if it came out really nice and turned into a library. So I bought that and I brought it back to Payette, Idaho, where my family lives in my the, my. my parents house but there's two storms coming <laughs> and there's some other stuff going on that just kind of like it didn't seem like the right time to sit down and like hours and hours of recording the harp and so I didn't um, and I got home I I got home before the storms hit and stuff like that and I decided to just map it out see if it was something that was salvageable for a library of, of interesting sounds um, because that's that's what I do. I'm, I'm into finding sounds. I don't really care where they come from. It, 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 it's more about what what happens to them once they're on the keyboard. And as you can see, with a little bit of noise reduction, that's it. And then inside of Unify, I've done some of my programming skills, tricks. There's uh, both a soft velocity layer that is um, a little filtered. And then when it gets to above a velocity of 78, it goes to bright samples. So while on a harp, you really can't get to the... You kind of expect that when you're playing it. So you can do, you know, things like that and so forth. Um, the top notes, there's a little bit of extra thunk. So I used a filter max high pass filter to filter out everything by about 600. Like if I turn these off so you can hear. Just to clean it up. Maybe 450 is a little bit closer and more natural. So I can do more in some cases with programming than you can just with raw samples and contact. Um, so I did that. I Um, I'm working on MIDI files and part of this live stream, I'll show you guys some tricks how I've made. And the nice thing with this is that I have all 
all sorts of MIDI file, MIDI box. Here, let's see if I bring this out of the way so you can see. Let's see if I go like this. You'll see I'm using a stack to get um, all sorts of different. Let's see. Uh, let me get that down just a little bit more and get this like this and shrink it. Even. The nice thing with the Unify is we can play with the size of things quite quite a bit, right? So we can shrink this so you can see. I am minor sevens. And a couple of cool things. Because this is MIDI data, I can control the velocity and the speed. Most uh, harp libraries, they do the glissandos as samples. So I can go slow to fast. I can do some things here you can't do with a lot of the harp libraries that are like six times more expensive than this library will be, you know? So I can do things here you can't do with your $200 harp libraries where... Right? So really fun things like that are possible. Um, I have other things like this is harp phrases. So I've got a whole bunch of... And I have different types of patterns that I've created. Get this resized. And for the speed knob, I set it up with stair steps so that it's calculated to be exact amounts. So that if I have it here, it's 100%. To find out for sure, let's go over here to lo-fi and get a drum groove going, right? So we can go BPM drum. I uh, get like a lo-fi, quirky polite. go over here to the library and like let's get the glisses uh load this into a new we could like add reverb so we get a nice big splash from that when they hit you know because i'm more into the sound design and trying to make sounds that you haven't necessarily heard before not trying to do a concert harp. There's like eight concert harps made by sample library companies already that are great. I don't need to do that. I'm not trying to do that. So I'm, hello, Carol. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to all of you, by the way. I, I want to say um, Happy New Year. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate that. Happy New Year to everybody. So I'm more into finding new ways of doing things. And as you can see, the C stands for core, and there's only just a harp. And then there's harpy sprinkles and granular harps and like, what the heck? Well, first of all, I did a Mega Magic harp. And I'm probably gonna do another one and maybe perfect this one some more. This is one where with no reverb, no outside effects, this can be all the way turned down. The samples have reverb in them.
And I went for a more really traditional, really open, airy. I'm still might work around that a little bit more. We'll see. Um, and then there's granular harps and all sorts of things. So I did these things using output has a really cool plugin called portal, which does all sorts of, um, well, here, let's do this. Call it Mary's harp. Um, I'm not going to show you my presets, but I did exactly. But if we go over here to audio effects to output portal, just to give you an example of what this plugin is and what it does. It's a granular audio processing plugin with all sorts of controls for. You have pitch controls, you have what kind of scale, whether it's octaves or chords or all sorts of things. So you can do really cool things with samples with this plugin. You feed it samples. Um, there's a number of plugins that like Stream and a couple others that I'm familiar with that are granular where you put the samples into it. What's fun with this is you actually just put this on your voice, put it on drums, whatever you want to. It can do all sorts of really cool things. If you get into the categories of sounds, they have all sorts of glitchy... Right? So there's this. There's another plugin that I used as well. Uh, and as notice this, this is Unify 1.9 running on an Apple Silicon computer natively. Portal is currently not compatible with Apple Silicon from what I can tell because it's loading up through the wrapper technology that we've developed for Unify. So it's playing Portal in native mode in Unify, even though Portal is not native. That's pretty cool. Um, the other one that's really, really cool that I used, if I can find them, is Devious Machines Infiltrator. This is just like almost like plugin of the year last year to me because of all the techniques and these crazy things this can do to samples. There's a harp under here. <laughs> Right? If we turn this off. Harp. <laughs> so it can do all sorts of crazy things with filtering, looping, slowing down. All sorts of things. So I use these tools and reverb to create harpy sprinkles where you play one note and you get kind of a cool, in this case, this really, really cool, like interstellar vibe, pipe organ-y cool thing. And you can like layer the harp on top of it and becomes really interesting. But these sprinkles are harp samples. This is what I did with those harp samples. Sampled it, mapped it. I looped it because so the sprinkles won. It plays, then it becomes more reverb, then just fades out. <laughs> what, harpened? <laughs> you guys are too funny. <laughs> so this is the fade out version, and then loop.
gives you this really, really cool ongoing motion sound that just sustains. It doesn't fade out. And then Harpy Sprinkles 2 is a little more pure. Space. But that's harp samples. So that's this is the ma mega magic part taken a little bit farther um, than just reverb. I wanted to do something more than just reverb. I want to do something special for this library. So, and then the loop version. You can go in and program now and A lot of fun things we can do with these samples. And I've done a few things fun with these samples. So here's like an example where um, I got a BPM split, one finger on the left hand. Playing one of the, my MIDI file phrases on the harp. So fun things like this can be done. Harping in the forest for the. You know, dancing sugar plums is kind of cool for. And this is using trigger boxes. And I, here, let's see. I haven't set this up yet. Let's go over here and call this probability. So we would click right here, go to link parameters. Let's say equal value. I like to use this one now uh, when I'm doing these types of assignments because I'm going to go into the MIDI effect to trigger box to probability, and this sets it at what it currently is. And then I can go, okay, I want it as it goes up, I want it to increase to 100%. Right, and I want to do this also for instrument layer two. So go instrument layer two because I have two layers of a harp and a bell sound that are both having probability done to them, kind of equally. So now I can go from to max. probability back down and now it's starting to limit and we could let's say the lower we want to go even lower than 18 percent let's say we want to go like down to like five percent for one part maybe for the bells we have it stop at like seven percent so and then i have this third layer that's playing on a predictable clock as well But it's using a blue arp to play chords. So there's a bit of an energy, but it's got a little chaos and motion to it from the samples. Then one, this is a sample that's from the factory va voicing. It's from Mega Magic Bells and Winds, which is one of the libraries I'm going to bring out this year. All of the samples for Unify will be coming out later this year. And then the harp. And they got reverb and delay and cool stuff on them. So the, all three together. Right? So lots of fun stuff like this. I've made a couple of things like I was opening with talking to St. Peter. Right?
Prancing in purity. <laughs> I like that. You guys are too funny. <laughs> Stringing it along. So. Uh, then there's all sorts of like really cool things. Um, trying to sound a little bit more like the sample libraries. This is using Clang Falter as a convolution reverb without it. And it's playing the natural hall. And I've stretched it to be longer. One cool thing, you should check this plugin out if you haven't. This is the free convolution reverb plugin inside of Unify that comes with Unify. It's one of our 10 reverbs. Um, most convolution reverbs don't let you stretch the convolution sample that's being used to make the reverb. This does. So I can go from, let's see, shape all the way to natural. I can stretch it. Which basically is like sampling it, pitching it down. also have beginning and ending and shape and stereo width and a whole low frequency cut and high frequency cut all in a convolution reverb plugin that's free inside of unify and if you haven't let me show you just really quick little thing there's two categories of sounds inside. Click right here if it doesn't show the Unify standard library because it will show other library folders sometimes instead. But um, Ambiverb are the reverb presets for this. So there's four inch, stay, uh, four foot, four second. All the way up to 13 seconds. And then in the second folder is noise verb. And these are using noises, plastic bags that I scrumpled. Dropped coins. And you can stretch these out. Give really really cool ambiences, uh, distortion, soda bubbles, water drain coin rolls, and it depends on frequency content. And the harp doesn't have a lot of frequency content, so these don't stick out as much as they would. But there's all sorts of crazy stuff in here. Swipes of John bass, even chords. These are really fun. Let's do a real fun experiment just because this, this is what we're doing for the live stream. We're just hanging out. So if you have questions, pop them into the stream. Is there any way to add your own? Yes, uh, it's not. So it's not a uh, WMV, but a WAV, a WAV file. And yes, you can add your own very, very easily. In fact, I'll show you. Um, so here, check this out. Let's go drums, call up a drum groove. Um, let's find one that's more normal. There you go. And then go over here to Unify Standard Reverb Clang Falter, right in the middle of the mix, Clang Falter. Now, you can drag in your own WAV file if you want, I believe. If I drag right here, no, it doesn't. Um, no file loaded, click right there. Go to your desktop, choose a WAV file, load it. Uh, you can also make a folder. In fact, if you want to make it really easy, you could go to your Unify folder. Um, let's go to Libraries. To by, I, I think it'd be safe doing this. 
But impulse responses, right here are the two folders with the WAV files for everything that Clangfalter is currently using. You can make a new one, John Custom. And then I can, let me find just a handful of samples to stick in here really quick. Let's see here. Uh, let's go sample libraries. Uh, samples. I'm just going to grab a couple of my own samples. These are, let's see. Uh, where is... Let's do special effects. Yeah, these would be really weird. Dead space samples. So I'm going to put these into my John's custom folder, right? So I have to reload Clang Falter again since I did this. Let's say just delay. Then changes back to reverb Clang Falter. And now when I go to the Unify standard folder you'll see there's a john's custom folder and i've put my own samples in here so i can Even shorter shape it right so you can put your own wave files and experiment with Whatever samples you want to go through a clang, uh, just a, a convolution reverb. So if we go down here to these orchestra hits and stuff I was telling you about on the drum grooves. All sorts of really cool. cool weird samples that are pitch based so i could go up here to bpm bass i could say load up fritz and they work and it's really really fun so you can use them as like a steady tone that stays at a certain key All sorts of crazy stuff like that's possible. So Clang Falter is a secret weapon. I haven't made a big deal out of it, and I should, because uh, I suck at promotion. <laughs> I'm too busy making sounds. But Clang Falter is part of Unify's tools. The story behind it is really interesting. It's an effect that Shane found that had been just like put into the dog pile of past plugins that were no longer compatible as operating systems advanced and got newer. And it was in the public domain. And he revived it and brought it back to life so it could be played with inside a Unify. And turns out it's really, really cool. It has actually multiple channels, which I don't think we get into. I don't even know if we've even tested. Uh, but when you load up into 1-1, one, one, it automatically loads 1-1 one, one and 1-2, one, the left and right channels with the samples. So it's stereo. It sounds really great. So... Uh, that is, and you can turn on and off the just sections. So if you. Fun stuff. So that is a cool effect we can play with inside of there. To... Kind of stuff. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> Enough of that tangent, but. That's really, really fun stuff to me because there's so much you can do with convolution reverb and stuff like that. Um, so let me show you here. The next place I wanted to show you was just MIDI file creation of these harp glisses and stuff. It's really, really fun. It's far easier than you might think. Then again, I think it might depend on what DAW you're using and... and how um, this works. But inside of Logic Pro, it has a really nice, and I think most sequencers, because this has been around for like 30 years, should have <laughs> this ability. Um, if not, I don't know what to say. Um, get another sequencer <laughs> or something like that. But what I did for this, let's go over here, let's call up Unify, inside of Logic. Uh, OK. 
okay. And let's go to harp. We'll just call up Simple Mary's harp. See, I'm gonna actually quit Unify here just to make sure I don't have resources being doubled. Now, what you do, <laughs> this is gonna sound so like unbelievably simple, it's not even funny, but you just sequence, play a chord. <laughs> and if you wanna like embellish on it, let's say that for, I, I have done two octave, but I wanna do some four octave ones. So I haven't done these yet. So. Take this. Either that or maybe I would get rid of... Right? So they're all quantized to 100%. Then inside of logic right over here in the region settings if you go to the expanded more section you have this area called q flam and this is where you can say 30 second notes and boom harp gliss done uh if i wanted to be glissing down in the other direction i would say uh minus 32 Done. Thank you. <laughs> and then just spit it out as a MIDI file. So I could go over here. Let's say, let's, uh, let's do up first. So we go plus 32. Say uh, four octave bliss up major. And let's copy that name, export, paste the name, and put that in to um, the gliss folder. I have a gliss folder and I have a phrase folder. So we'll say right here, save, and boom, get rid of it. <laughs> now I can go back to Mary's harp right here. Turn on MIDI box, which is already there. And I don't have this in the stack. I'll make a four octave stack if I want. But down here, four octave gliss up, only I called it major and it's minor. Silly me. Again, these speed controls are awesome because you can put human little speeding up and slowing down. You can customize and automate that into your sequencer. How you want the harpist to play. And if you don't like these samples, all you have to do is go here um, let me show you an example. I bought a harp library for an example just to like, oh, how does this compare to other harp libraries? I like mine better, but let me show you. Here's a contact library of harp. Show you. Uh, this is the Grand Harp from Cine Samples. And they have this really weird church reverb, which I'm not a... But you can put any sample you want, any sample library. So it gives you extended capabilities with all your harp libraries, not just mine. In fact, we could like 
right click load mine into a separate layer um, and then if you hold down control and shift and click the little plugin operations menu that copies the settings go in here turn this on if you hold down shift and click this i paste the settings so i've just pasted fixed my midi box to be the four octave gliss harp you could have one harp on the left and one harp on the right there's all sorts of ways to get, get all sorts of creative places with harps because harps i love the sound of harps They're just wonderful so that's how you can do glissandos really easily phrases it's a little bit even simpler because you're just playing in something right so if we went over here let's make a little phrase a little four measure phrase and me and wasn't here And then I like to go to the region for quantize, maybe like 80%. You have to make sure of a couple things when you're doing MIDI files for MIDI box or something like this. Look under the piano editor, scroll in and make sure this is not before one. And if it is, um, fix it so it's on one. And then make sure at the end, none of these samples go past measure five if they do this then midi box is going to create an additional measure uh, to c accommodate for the note sustaining over and we don't want that so we'll say undo uh let me see something for a second here who is sending me a note um, oh it's my sweet daughter she is in turkey <laughs> good <laughs> she and her boyfriend had an opportunity to go to Istanbul. So she is in Istanbul right now, experiencing life in Istanbul. I mean, just crazy, crazy, crazy fun stuff. So uh, anyway, so now we have a phrase. So we name this, uh, uh, let's call it Mellow Minor phrase right and since i did it i'll put a jl at the end so that you know it's me now these midi files will be included with the library you're free to use these anywhere you want so this is going to go into the phrase folder so we can say save and delete because now that it's in unify as a preset in that folder, I can call it up anytime I want. So I go over here, turn down a MIDI box, and instead of, let's open up MIDI box, and instead of playing these presets, you just click right here, say, no, we don't want the, the glyphs, we want to go to the phrases folder, and where is, oh, oh, it just got called live stream mid. Um. right now i have it set to one shot i'm down here i'm going to set it to looping and key but just uh play only just key transpose polytranspose means polyphonic so i can kind of cool means you can play the MIDI file as whatever note you play it will play the MIDI file so here's four A flats or you can play fifths so there's all sorts of ways to use it if you set this just to key transpose then it's only one note 
can't play chords. So since I gave that a bad name, that's that was bad on my part. So let's go over here to libraries, make a magic heart. This is what we do when we're building a library. So you guys are just kind of following along phrases, live stream. We want to call this um, mellow minor four majors JL. Okay. So now when I go to MIDI box, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to say reselect that. And let's build on this. Let's we're gonna build a little patch together. So let's make it more of a give it a space. Maybe since we were talking about Clang Falter, let's use Clang Falter in a creative way. So now there's a the if you click right here where it says no file loaded, this allows you to select by a file selector. There's also a browser if you click right here to show browser. And I you guys don't have the custom, in fact. Just, just to be safe, I never want to use anything that you guys don't have in your, especially the Unify Standard folder, because that's that's the protected folder where everything is guaranteed. If it's inside of the Unify Standard Library folder, then everybody has it. That's this area of critical uniformity with all of us. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just I'm gonna make sure it's clear and it's not confusing. Let's call back up Clang Falter now that I've gotten rid of my JL folder. And when I go to browser, there's just ambiverb and noise verb. All these presets are the same for all of us. I, when I designed Unify, the whole key, the, the way that this works is that there is all these samples that Guru Sampler has access to. If you go to Guru Sampler and you go to the Unify Standard Library, all of these samples from all of these different libraries, that's not the complete sample libraries, they're just like light versions, right? But it's samples I wanted to make sure that we all had access to at any time. So that is part of the design of Unify, is that there is this core set of samples, effects, and even the presets for the effects like Clang Falter that are the same for all of us. So I could use these assets when building future libraries like this library for the harp i can go to a noise verb i can go to really cool like water or orchestra hit samples or soda bobbles and we all have soda bubbles for every one of us that's just part of the design when we did unify Now shape will shape it. The begin will start later in the sample. Like, I don't want that low frequency stuff, right? That's kind of muddy. So filter it out. I'm going to transpose this up like maybe two octaves. Let's see, do I want to go down an octave? Yeah, I like that. So that's the lowest note. Let's see if we can duplicate this and find a MIDI file that can complement this in the phrases. So let's go duplicate this library, this this light, this layer, and let's let's first let's solo this and let's play around some. It's a minor one, so I'm looking here through the list as I hit. The Oh, you know what? I do a chord progression. 
If I go to MIDI box one, and I set this to only be two measures, then I'm safe. Let's see, let's open up mini box, see if there's another. Oh. That could be kind of cool. Now here, I'm gonna show you another cool trick. I want these to sound different from each other a little bit. So I'm gonna open up this unify layer and I'm gonna actually get rid, by holding down Option, I'm gonna get rid of three layers, and then I'm gonna click right here to give full keyboard range to this just one sample set. So I'm gonna use Shift, and because I have so many samples, Shift works really, really well on this because it's shifting the samples that are used to make the pitch. Once I go down, it sounds really ghostly. And it's maybe like, instead of loudness emphasizing the low end, let's go EQ, filter max. There. Now that, let's give it a different clang falter preset so it's different than the one on the, the one above. So let's say, Kind of cool. Let's see how that works. And to make it less perfect, let's go over here to Unify's MIDI effects to the creative jitter box. And this makes every note have random timing. I'm going to give it like 35 milliseconds to play with. Let's have this go up an octave. We could get into really cool hip hop pop territory with this, right? Do you hear it? So we need a big sub bass in here. How about we put a sub bass? Let's go unify standard. Actually, I might do it this way. I think Cloud City, where did I have all the cool sub bass? Uh, BPM bass. I think I had um, hip hop sub. Let me try this. Let's say load this into a new unify layer. And I'm gonna hold down Control and Option and down like this to pop it out into a single layer instead of being embedded. So let me look really quick at my MIDI boxes. Yeah, I'm not at 100%. So I gotta set these both to be 100% because <laughs> they weren't. Speed up our tempo here. Actually, we gotta speed it up inside of Logic. So great. So go to Guru Sampler. We're using a sample from the Unify Standard Library, MIDI box. We're using a MIDI file from Cloud City. So I need to either go to Unify Standard Library or else bring over Box Hop. So let's see if we can find inside of here. Uh, bases, if we go mid melodic bass files. Now, 
couple of things. We can use offset. So it's too fast, right? So let's half time it. Let's four time it. There you go. Works. Now, another thing that has to happen for this one, that sub gate bass gets too low, doesn't it? Now, just, just to show you how this sounds when you add grooves to it, let's go to unit chill, BPM drums. Let's add a chill mix to this. I'm gonna use control option and click the bolt. Well, let me take a look at this really quick. Yeah, see, since it's just a single layer, MIDI box is in that layer. You can use the, it's same as this right here, replace with embedded instrument one which means it takes it from being a unified layer to being an embedded instrument one, which means I have access to all the parameters without having to go into a unified layer. So, and, and now we have the ability to go the opposite and say move into an embedded unified layer if we want. But by this way, I can go up here to the drum groove and I can say half time that. Right? So, we confirmed it all works. But that sub bass going down too low is a problem. So we're going to use combo box to fix that. Um, I'm going to mute the drums. We'll delete them at the end because you have to own the unit chill library to get that drum groove. But this bass part, I like it here. I, I want it, definitely want it to hit. Even B flat's okay, but below B flat starts to really, really fall apart. So let's go over here. Let's say move into an embedded unify layer. Actually, no, we don't even need to do that. What we need to do is make a combo box that has this built in it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, um, Let's mute. This is this is comp, this is brain surgery. Okay, so you guys ready? Let me see what we're. I haven't checked chat. Kind of got carried away, but um, um, um. So this is brain surgery. If you're ready for brain surgery, we're gonna do brain surgery. We're gonna replace this Guru sampler. I'm gonna go over here and say operations, copy plugin state. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over here and instead of unify, uh, stand the the, the just this. Sampler, we're going to go to util the utility folder and combo box. Combo box is this really cool box where MIDI effects, audio effects, and instruments can all reside and do fun things. And you right click inside of here, and now you have access to any MIDI effect you have on your computer, any instrument you have on your computer. You can make stacks that all fit in one layer. And so I need to go unify standard, guru sampler. Right click on this and say paste plugin state. And by doing that and double clicking this, you'll see it's now set back up with the NATO fields base, right? So we have the base part. That's done. Um, that will go over here on this side for the sound. Over here is MIDI effects. So we're going to say MIDI effects. I need to have MIDI box. And we're going to go up here and I'm going to, I'll do it the old fashioned way of going operations, copy plugin state. There is a shortcut for that now where you hold down control and shift and you click the little plugin operations menu. That's the same as saying copy plugin state. Open combo box and combo box is behind this. So let me get to like this. And I can, uh, I don't know if it's working the right way. I, I believe you're supposed to be able to hold down shift and click this. No, uh, you have to right click and say paste plugin state. And now this has that MIDI effect, right? It has the MIDI pattern, the bass pattern that we have. 
set to the four time, one, one quarter speed and all that kind of stuff. And if I was to route this and then have this go into here and then have the audio come over here, it should play same. So I don't need this MIDI box anymore. I'm going to say remove MIDI box because I don't need that because combo box has MIDI box inside of it. Now, now, why did I do this? Why did I use, why do I need to use combo box? Well, like I said, B flat, that bass is starting to fall apart and needs to go up an octave. So I'm going to add two of the MIDI effect we've created called MIDI filter. <laughs> Simple little dude, right? So we're going to say two MIDI filters. And instead of this going straight to MIDI box, it's going to get split so that both the inputs from the input from MIDI that notes that I play are going to two separate MIDI filters. And then they get joined back into MIDI box. And this first MIDI filter, I now have parameters here. We've set this up so that I can right click and I can say B flat. And I'm gonna transpose this up 12 semitones. Uh, let me see here, I need to break uh, this one. So you can hear it, hear that? Transpose is working so that I can key range a certain part of the keyboard and transpose it up. And then I'm going to take the second MIDI filter and I'm going to say starting at the next note, it's going to be normal. So when I play B flat, I now get that bass line up an octave. If I play C above it, it's back down low. So I'm using MIDI filter to split the keyboard and have the low notes go up an octave so that it sounds normal. We, we first developed this for the um, BBC Symphony Orchestra where Jeff wanted certain strings to be able to repeat and play properly without going outside of their range. And so this is used, this is a technique from that for this. So, so like if I play E flat down here and then E flat up an octave higher, the bass line is the same. But the notes underneath it for the harp are transposing up and down in octaves. So it's still really useful to have this going on. It's, how's your brains? <laughs> See, I'm playing octaves, an octave. The harps are transposing, but the bass line is not. So now I have my drum groove. If I play A flat, the bass plays nice. It's not in some blah, like belchy frequency range. If we wanted to take this even further, we would right click on all four of the top notes and say B. And then just, just for fun, I'm going to just do this really quickly. We could go down here to like a pad or something like that. Let's choose one of these cool pads, maybe even a BPM pad just for fun. Say like a wave sequencing pad, something that's doing a whole bunch of crazy layers. Right click, say load into a new unify layer, click the low note and set it to C. <laughs> See? So it it all <laughs> it all can all work together. So it's pretty cool.
So, um, let me get rid of the groove. That's the only thing we really can't. And what should we call this? Hey, Cornell. Let's call, the, what should we call this? I'm curious what you guys think. It's, it's, it's got some sort of a cool urban vibe to it. Dreamscape. Hey, dubes. Uh, let's see. BPM split. Uh, how about a dubescape? <laughs> Harpo's basement. Ooh, I like that. Um, hanging in Harpo's basement. <laughs> how that? That work? I got it. Harpo basement hang. <laughs> hang time. There we go. Okay, we'll call it that for now. Uh, BPM split. I, I still have a lot of cleanup to do. This library will be out in about two weeks. Uh, BPM split. Uh, save as. Save. So, we've made... That's, that was a, that's probably the most complex patch I think I've made in with with you guys on screen doing some brain surgery and getting into combo box is so cool for things like that and, and then we can go through and name things this is the base Solo's on. Solo. Duh. Solo got turned on somehow. I was um, trying to name that patch. And uh, engaged solo, which is not ideal. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So go like that. Go like this. Shrink this. By the way, we've gotten word from the Juice development team that they are working to optimize how plugins work on Apple Silicone. We've gotten a pretty good, it can be better, and we're glad to hear that um, they're looking into getting things better. It's just a little, little, there's some un unexpected things happening every now and then that will get better. Just, just so you know, everybody's aware of what's going on. So this is the base. But it is, I see what it is. I'm trying to type an S and that calls up the key command. I'll I'll fix the name later. It's not not that important. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Anyway, so I want to show just really quickly. I want to point out a couple of things. I gave you guys a ten dollar bill this weekend at the website. If you go to the plugingguru.com website, pick out a library you want, and I believe the promo code is. Uh, let, of course, uh, I have a memory condition that's weird from having encephalitis when I was a kid and even when you guys write to me for tech support this is embarrassing to admit but it is what it is I have to look at Unify's interface to remember the name of the parameters for a lot of things it's just the way my brain works doesn't work all that kind of stuff anyway 10 bucks off is the promo code <laughs> I have created for you guys so that you can save uh, $10 on any library except for Unify and except for the um, uh, Cyber Clause, which is the library that's still available for two more weeks for Diva. Uh, Fred Nungott created this really, really fun library called Cyber Clause. <laughs> and 
It's 90 patches for Diva, saved in Unify format as well, and it's $11. So it's a no-brainer to pick up. It's really, really cool. Let me show it to you really quickly. Um, it's down here. It goes. He's got Diva Station is another library he has for Diva that we sell on our website. This is a library that after the 21st of January, it will no longer be available for sale. It will go away. So... Lowering the patches into layers. There's really cool bases. Like, seriously crazy sounds. And all dis dystopic Christmas Eve. Fred's a hoot. I, I look forward to seeing him one of these days again. I met him in person at Superbooth like four years ago. So this is six diva patches together. Couple of these I worked on a little bit so that and Daft Santa. <laughs> Beautiful pads, all sorts of cool stuff. So, two things to get on this. This is an $11 library, which is really special. Lots of real-time controls to knobs and... Second page should be Pump House or third page. Oh my gosh. So you have all the... So there's real-time controls to mess up the sounds in really cool ways. Good job, Fred. Really cool library. And also, if you want to buy any other library at the website, I've given you guys a $10 bill until like Sunday night. I'll turn off the, the promo code, but save 10 bucks. We'll save you 10 bucks <laughs> at the website. Oh, actually, the promo code is 10 bucks off. 1-O-B-U-C-K-S-O-F-F. So use that to save some money if you want. <laughs> yes, Diva is needed for this library to work. It does not work in Unify without Diva. Let me make that really clear. It is originally a library for Diva. And then it, all the patches have been saved into Unify format. And then additional layered bonus fun patches. <laughs> were created, but every one of these is calling up Diva, as well as Guru Samplers and OBXDs and all the other things that are part of Unify. But you have to have Diva or else it's not going to work. Um, they had this wonderful sale. I think it's all over now, but they had Uhi products at 50% off, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, Tim, that's right. Diva, this the def definitely keeps pushing Diva into new territory, what Fred's doing. So it's really fun. Ah, uh, yeah, Michael, yeah. Uh, Diva is a CPU heavy plugin. It's more on the heavier side than a lot of the uh, instrument of plugin effects out there and so forth. So yeah, if, if, even with multi-core, it still gets... 
I mean, we're playing five. This computer here is pretty powerful, so it's, it's not a problem. But if you're on a 2011 MacBook Pro, you're definitely going to be coughing up computer chips. <laughs> oh, oh, the sales up to the 10th of January. If you don't own Diva, it is truly one of the most beautiful, flexible. Um, all, all of Uhi's synthesizers are great. Well, here, let me let me show you the website because it's 50% off. It's at, I believe they still have it going on at Native Instruments. Yeah. So get deals now. They have either the all bundle. You got three days and 12 hours left if you want to do a acquisition, you can get the collections, get Zebra Legacy for $99. If you go to learn more, it will show you all the products and you can get Diva for $89.50, which is a pretty sweet deal. Um, a lot of my friends that have all of these also say, make sure you look at Repro. I love Repro. We've done a library for Repro. It's one of my favorite scents just as far as to just, I don't think I have it in here. Um, to show as far as my, I did a patch library for it, but I think I can show it here. So if we go, ooh, he, Repro, Repro 1 is just so cool. Let's see, do I have, no, I haven't loaded my library in here. Oh, too bad. Uh, It's just the vibe of it is just so I love it. Here, let me see if I can get. Oh, I, I let's see here. So go over here. Give me two seconds. I can do this. Um, go over here to unify a plugin guru. Uh, 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 let's see if I say, I'm looking for my repro library. Repro, P, uh, repro power pack. Here we go. So double click this. Um, oh, there's repro. There it is. One second. Watch it. Watch how fast this is. Uh, this is what I love. Unify is I can go. Um, here is the Unify format. I just click over here and say. <laughs> Whoops. It recovered. OK, everybody, take a deep breath. Did it, did it work? Um, I don't see, I don't see it. Let me see here. Let's rebuild the database really quick. See if that calls it up. We're doing a full rebuild. Uh, uh, nope. Let's try this. Okay, one more, one more way I can do this. Um, yeah, let's go like this, like this. Open libraries. So let's go like this. Okay, you're not gonna help. <laughs> Copy. I'll do this the gorilla way paste there. Now we go rebuild. And dup 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 dum. Just like this, we should have the repro power pack. I'd love repro. Um, it's another one of those synths that's just so cool. Uh let's see if we can get show MIDI back up and running. Let's get that back in place over here. Da -da -da. Da -da. And resize this. There. Okay. And there it is. Repro Power Pack. So there's Repro 1 and 5 in my patch library, which you can save $10 on if you want. Um, there's all sorts of really...
Um. So check this out. So if, I'm gonna go over here and say unify layer, and let's say. Good Lord. Uh, I haven't had this problem happen where I can't even get focus. Interesting. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's do it this way. Um, here's the melody part. So I'm going to select that. So I did Jesu Joy. And that's using the built-in sequencer inside of Repro, which is really fun. Go to the synth page, to the sequencer. You can set it to this record mode, where as you play in notes, it's recording what note you're playing for up to 64 steps. Really, really, really cool. Um, so that way... This changes. Velocity and the pitch. Like, let's mess all of these up so you can see that it's mess up a bubble. <laughs> Really cool trumpet. Got some typical Skippy big sounds, so. Just one patch. on top <laughs> goes happy so yeah some patches don't work together <laughs> but the sounds of this is just epic I mean it's it's just great stuff so the same can be said, of course, for D.Va. Um, we did the unified library for D.Va. I could show you that really quick. Um, we got just a few more minutes left in the live stream. Is there any questions you guys have? See, here's what I'm talking about. See how uh, when I'm over here and unify is the focus, right? It's great. It's fine. If I go to the patch browser, Look at what happens to the processor. There's something that happens when it's totally freaking out. And then I go back here and it goes, oh, no, oh, OK. It's like some sort of a like <laughs> relationship dependent person. It just freaks out when it's not the focus. And so there's stuff they have to fix inside of Juice with how it deals with Apple now has high efficiency cores, which are messing things up because they're running at different rates. And they don't do very well with audio compared to the normal super cores, right? And so every now and when I go over here to another thing, boom, it's no longer the focus and it freaks out. So that's the kind of stuff that we're still working to figure out and solve. And it's bigger problems than we can do that Shane can do as a programmer. It's something that has to happen in the core of Juice and how it works with Apple's processors. So, but that is aware of, they're working on it, so it's gonna get even better as it goes now and stuff like that. So, 
<laughs> now, Hive is another one that's incredible. All of Uhi's synthesizers are really great. I There's not one of them that I, I don't love. I love Bazil. Of all of them, my one of my favorites probably just, uh, it's very difficult, more difficult to program because it's more complex. But here, if we go, um, let's see. It, this this isn't letting me right click. Let's see, reveal in the finder. Because I have so many thousands and thousands of patches, I, I manage things in a little different way than we have the subsets option up here for choosing what libraries you want it to show. I could say, just show these three libraries and close. And now there's only these three libraries in the list. But searching still would require it scanning all of the libraries. And I have literally hundreds of thousands of patches if I get them all in here. So I have them out in kind of a crazy way. But if I go down here to unified, um, oh, where are they? Uhi, here we go. Repo, Diva. here's all of them. So if we go libraries and let's do a quick scan. It will add all of the Uhi products to my, my Unify build. We've unified the patches to all of Uhi synths. There's just great to have in their Unify format to play with. Here's Diva with its 475 factory patches. <laughs> So easy to program. The thing that makes Diva unique in the world of synthesizers, software-based, is you can see there's a little triangle by each one of these component areas for the filter, for the envelopes, for the oscillator, and you can choose different oscillator types, different waveforms, I'm not modulating it with anything like that, but you can get into some really interesting things. Triple VCO, like a mini mode. Then here's your VCF ladder, like a mini mode. But if I want, I could say I want it to be the bite filter. And that resonance is totally different than the latter resonance. Then you get into all sorts of the tuning and the LFOs, and there's all sorts of things with voicing modifications and trimmers. Um, Fred really knows this section of the synthesizer and really takes advantage of all the unique stuff in here to make the patches that he makes. Um, and a lot of the factory patches are using these things too, but that's what makes Diva so deep is that you have all of these tweak abilities and modifications, math rectifies and quantize and so forth that you can run modulation sources through to create all sorts of really cool alternate types of modulation sources, not just a standard LFO or an envelope, right? But let me show you my other scent that I love. If you haven't checked it, I, I, think, it's, I think it's in his sale. I'm not sure. But... <laughs> Bazil with its modular capable semi-modular layout with up to four oscillators and all of this stuff for patching and so forth. You just click and drag to move things to different places. You can connect things. And the BPM patches are just so fun. I love, there's 1500 patches for this, but... And then if you go to Unify Layer and you just start layering up a handful of these BPM patches. Let's get rid of the di difficult dungeon. <laughs>
just it's really really fun you go to diva have a bpm patch from diva this is the fun thing is that you can go to all these different libraries I think, let's see where they at bpm is what they're called so unify layer um Got to hold down option and turn everybody down. So they just all work together and there's so many creative patches and tools inside of there that um, it's really cool. Okay. Well, let's do our shout outs. At the end of each live stream, we do a shout out. So it's that time. Thank you for joining. I appreciate all of you guys so much. It's so fun to get to hang out with you each week. Um, hope this was helpful. Got you guys into some deeper programming and stuff. We played with, even got into combo box programming, which I haven't gotten into much of before, but um, <laughs> for our basement hang time, Anyway, thank you so much. Shout out. Okay, cool. Netherlands. Hello, Eric. Taylor's here. Thank you, Taylor, as always, for being the great sidekick. He's just awesome. If you have any technical support questions, uh, unify support at plugingroo.com. As, as Taylor's pointing out, we're happy to help with any. We also have forums at forums.plugingroo.com which has all sorts of topics and questions and subjects and all sorts of fun things. So go there if you have questions and you want input from other musicians that are using Unify. Um, yes, I'm glad you guys are looking forward to the Harp Library. There's more work. I get to play some more, make some more new things before it comes out. So thank you, Guy. Ah, that's very nice of you. Thank you. It's just really fun that the iPhone, the phone, any phone can do recordings of a decent enough quality to turn into this. And, and it didn't take, I did not re-EQ the samples. I didn't do like a whole bunch of like, oh, room ambience, get rid of. There's actually, I have a list of samples where some of them have like, there's a little metal thing that was like, as I would pluck some notes that I didn't pick up. I'm going to try to minimize that this week a little bit. Maybe I'll make a video um, to put onto the channel for that because it's kind of fun. What mic? The mic that's built into the phone. I just set this next to the harp. And there's a little application called You Record. And... Let's see, turn it up. Just recorded right here on my phone. Uh, full pass. Each of the samples on my phone. And then took that file and transferred it over to my computer, chopped it into pieces, and here it is. Isn't that fun? So you don't have to have use what you got. Kind of the thing to the the thing to go. <laughs> um, Apple, Google. 
they all are quite capable at this point. So now I wouldn't say that this is the standard. I wish I could record. I wish I, I'm not going to go back to Idaho for this library, but I will do a, another library in the future where I really go when I want to do harmonics, maybe hire a harp player, take the harp to a studio so that it's in a nice environment instead of a front room by a piano. But for, for what it is, it's still playing the recordings over here, actually. Um, it's surprising how well it came out. I'm really, really happy with that. So here you go. Okay. All right. So we'll see you next week for another live stream. If you have ideas for uh, what we should talk about, what we need to try to do, anything like that, I'm always open. But yeah, the sound is... You know, this, it's Mary's harp is the part by itself. I got to show you this because either you're going to love this or you're going to hate this. But the Andreas, remember Andreas Voldenweider with the... Kind of that more poppy harp. A little bit of chorusing on it, a little brighter nail kind of sound. <laughs> so I can go from there to this is using the Mega Magic harp from Mega Magic Pat Dreams together. And then I did the Mega Magic Harp up here in the core, which has reverb. And I'm going to do one more Mega Magic Harp version 2, which will have really cool octave blooms. I think that'd be really pretty to have. Oh, and check this out. Pat, this is just the harp reverb from the granular sprinkles. Isn't that cool? That's taking the reverb as it fades out and then looping it. Right? Cool. Yes, this is a new library that will be out in about two weeks called Mega Magic Harp. It's a harp. sampled at Christmas time on my iPhone at my mom's house. She was willed this beautiful harp by a relative that passed away. It's like to replace it, it's like $16,000. It's a seriously incredible harp. And I just one night while everybody else was asleep, I recorded it as a test run with my phone. This is it. I didn't bring my recording equipment to Christmas. <laughs> so I wasn't able to record it with higher microphones. I have nice microphones and stuff. But for a Mega Magic Library, it's perfect. It's different than everybody else. I don't want to sound like everybody else. So, so this will be out probably about the 20th of January. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Recording quality of the phones is pretty stunning. I, I, I'm quite impressed. So thank you for joining. I appreciate you guys. You guys are all wonderful. Thank you, Guy, and everybody else. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week for another live stream, okay? Cheers. Bye. How do I? Uh, stop soon. Okay, bye.